I loved him because he taught me, he shaped me, he molded me, he helped to save me. And as long as he loved the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and worked for that man, it didn't matter what he thought about me. And it really didn't matter what nobody thought about me as long as you thought well of him. Yes, sir. That's right. Oh, listen. That's right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Times have changed. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And many of us have changed. I remember, brothers and sisters, when Allah blessed us with 70,000 people oh, yes. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. at Randall's Island. Oh, yeah. The Muslims, the followers of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, this flag, the sun, moon, and star, was flying from every pole at Randall's Island. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And 70,000 blacks and Hispanics were in that place that day. We came back in September. That was in May. We came back in September and had 40,000 for a straight lecture in Randall's Island. I remember calling the Honorable Elijah Muhammad on the telephone. And I said, Dear Apostle, it looks like we're going to capture New York for you, sir. And as Allah is my witness, he said these words. He said, brother, the time is soon coming. And you may go to the mosque. And you may not find a believer there other than yourself. I, it was incredible. How could this be? How could this be when we loved him so, when we loved the truth so? How could this be that I would go to mosque number seven that we built with sweat and blood and tears? How could it be that I could go there and wouldn't find a believer there other than myself? I couldn't believe it. I knew he said it, but I couldn't see it. But I lived to see it. I was standing on that corner one day with my violin in my hand. I had a long growth of about two or three weeks of hair, and I had funny clothes on. And I was standing across the street just watching the believers go in the mosque. But I couldn't go. Because I was with Elijah. I couldn't go. I couldn't go. And love that we had with one another had turned to hate. That's right. And many believers were made to believe that I, Louis Farrakhan, had swindled them out of their monies and to live in luxury. The home that I bought, with your help, is still there in New Rochelle, with your name on it, not mine. With your help, we bought Woody Crest. Right. Yes, right. With the sale of the speech. Yes. From that May uh, speech at Randall's Island, we raised enough money to buy Woody Crest. And we would not have bought Woody Crest if it were not for that brother, Todd Beer, James X, yes, sir. who was there as an orphan, as a little boy. And we bought that place on his suggestion. Yes, sir. I left this city oh, with you all with thousands of dollars of property. Yes, sir. Lots of property. Millions of dollars of property. And thousands of followers. That's right. And we were not uh, broke. 
The messenger put me over all the treasures. Yes, sir. And he said, anytime you want anything, brother, yes. just take it and leave a note there. But nobody could ever find a note because I never took a dime. That's right. I, I love this work. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's right. And I love you and your sacrifice you. Yes, for this work. We love you, sir. I left this city with only furniture and seven thousand dollars that I earned from speaking at colleges to my name. This is how I left. And Allah showed me a vision of the believers sweeping me out of the mosque into the gutter. I was floating above the mosque. And there they were sweeping me out into the gutter. And they didn't know and when they swept me out, they swept him out. Yes, sir. That's right. They swept Allah out. That's right. That's right. And then they went in the gutter. Come on. That's right. That's right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I grieve today because Yusuf Shah could be alive. Right now. He didn't have to die. The Savior told us that when the scientists wanted to die, they started eating three meals a day. Teach. You don't look the same as we used to look when you don't carry out the discipline that we were taught by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad through Yusuf Shah. When we break the discipline, we go out of life into death. Yes, sir. All right. Teach, dear. Teach. 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 Imam Waratuddin Muhammad, the son of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, as I looked at him today, I said, your father, to myself, your father started the work of Islam in America That's right. in a way greater than any that has ever done it right. and the sun is continuing the work of Islam but different from the way and method of his father but it's still Islam yes, so, and as he was saying the prayer I looked at my brother we were young men together yes, sir. He's such a, was such a beautiful and handsome man. And all of us that were students of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, our hope was in him. Yes, sir. That's right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. His great brother to his left today, or really to his right as he stood up, Assistant Supreme Captain Elijah Muhammad Jr. Yes, sir. Any of us who know know that Raymond Sharif and Elijah Jr., their chief operator, was Yusuf Shah. Right, right. He was the most loyal man to the family of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Brothers, sisters, the love that Yusuf taught me for the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the love that he taught me for the brotherhood is the source of my strength. I remember one day in the FOI I raised my hands to the brother and I was, you don't teach, dear brother. <laughs> and Yusuf saw me, he said, what are, you, what are you doing? What are you doing? I said, oh, nothing, sir. He said, oh, yes, you are doing something all right. He said, Brother Lewis, do you think you can whip all these brothers here? I said, no, sir, Brother Captain. He said, well, the next time you raise your hand to your brother, that's exactly what you're going to have to do. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. That man made it so 
that to raise our hand to our brother even in play was sin.